In this video, finally, let's submit our signed transaction to XRP Ledger. But since we are submitting our signed transaction in the same script, we don't need this verification process. You only need it when the input is coming from other people or some other scripts. In this case, the signed transaction is coming from the same script and we will be submitting it to XRP Ledger in the same file. So we don't need it. So before moving further, it's good to just check the output once. So let's execute the script. So node is the command, dist slash index is the file path and the file name. One means we are inputting family seed secret type. This is the family seed of the account from which we are sending one XRP to this destination address. So let's execute this script with this command. So this generates transaction signature along with transaction hash, which means this ID is transaction hash when it it's returned from XRP ledger as output. Okay. We have sufficient balance too. Why don't we check just to cross verify that this ID is not present uh, in the ledger. So let's just copy it and go to some explorer. Of course, select testnet and check for the result with this transaction hash. Of course, we have not submitted it to XRP ledger. So you can't find that transaction on the ledger using any explorer. So now let's add the code wherein we submit our transaction signature to XRP ledger. Let's use the client instance, which has a send method, which takes an object as argument. So let's get back. So this client is an instance of XRPL client, which is connected to this test net. We also use this client object to get account information here in the same script. Hope you remember this is the command that is account info. We executed it to get sequence number of our account. If you know the sequence number, just input it directly from command line, obviously, so that you can generate the transaction signature and transaction hash completely offline. So now to submit, there is a command called submit and make sure you need to enter these commands and the value as is. Do not make any uppercase, smaller case changes. Okay. It also takes another field, which is TX underscore blob to which we need to input this transaction signature as value. And that's it. That's it for now. So now let's output the result that is response sent back by XRP ledger, which is present inside the constant result. So let me execute it. You can again, once this is executed, you can check the balance. Once again, you just need to copy paste the command uh, for account information wherein balance is present. I won't do it here again. You can do it yourself. So I'll execute the same command once again, but now it executes, it generates the transaction signature and also submits it to XRP ledger. So this is the transaction signature, which got submitted to XRP ledger. And this is the output. And as I told you, this ID should match the transaction hash, which is present inside the response. Okay. So now let's check a couple of important fields. The first one is accepted. Our transaction got accepted. Okay. And it it has this result that is TES success, which means the transaction was applied, but only final in a validated ledger, which means we submitted and it got accepted, but that there is no surety that it got finalized. So let's copy the transaction hash and check it once again. And as you can see, this transaction has been finalized. You can check the details. This is the destination address we entered and we sent one XRP, right? So let's check that. So we sent one XRP to this. This is our account, by the way. And also check the transaction fees, which is 12 drops. So this is our account. Let's check that. This is the account associated with this family seed, 
which is present here. So this is the R address from which we sent one XRP. Okay. But, but you can't always run the script, copy the transaction hash, get to some testnet explorer and then check for the finality of the transaction, right? That doesn't make much sense. You must have some way to programmatically check if it got finalized. That is, this transaction was entered into final ledger and now it's immutable, okay? So we will write, we will extend this program further and programmatically check if this transaction actually got included in the final ledger, okay? For now, these two fields are important. That is accepted must be true and engine result must be TES success, which means the transaction was applied only finally in a validated ledger, okay? In the next lesson, let's see how we can check for the finality of, of our transactions, okay?